Sunny got her first uh, nasty four-letter word comment on one of her videos today. And I said, you know what? That means you've arrived. Because if you never get any nasty comments on your videos, it means nobody's watching them. Nobody can say anything bad if they don't even know you exist. So we're all gonna get nasty comments from trolls. I figure it's a, it's a badge of honor. So awesome. Oh, thank you, Lisa. I'm glad that you like my two cameras. <laughs> Makes me feel so official. So welcome to day three of the challenge. I'm excited that you're all joining me today. We are talking about the importance of being found on YouTube when people do searching. So we're gonna be talking about SEO today, my favorite topic, keyword research. And here is my hashtag, SEO is my bitch. I have one of these lovely little beauties to give away today. Holy crap, that was hot. And I'm also going to give away a copy of my book and I will autograph it for the person that wins it because let me tell you why. Does anybody follow Amy Porterfield? Um, do you listen to her podcast, Online Marketing Made Easy? She had a contest on Instagram like a month ago and it said, if, you're, if you listen to my podcast, um, do me a favor, make a one minute video and post it and tag me and tell me, I don't even remember what she was asking for. And the winner was going to get an all expenses paid trip to San Diego to have like a whole day with her to learn from her and, and then go to the spa and have like a spa day too. And I was, oh my God, I would die to win that. Well, I did not win that, but I won a runner up. I won a, um, uh, full focus planner and a water bottle and some ear pods and like all these cool things. But my favorite part of it was that I got a little handwritten note from Amy Porterfield. And I don't honestly know if she wrote this or a member of her staff did, but it is literally hanging on my wall in a place of honor because that was freaking awesome. So I am going to pay it forward and send along a little swag today. So hopefully you guys will participate when I ask questions and I can, oh, we switched cameras and I can send you some stuff too. Woohoo! All right, so on day one, we were talking about finding a niche, right? Today, we're going to talk about how to make videos that that specific person will want to watch. And how do we do that? We do that through keyword research. So let me commence with the screen sharing. Okay, so here are a couple of my favorite tools. I love keywords everywhere. There is also this one called Uber Suggest, which again is free. This is available on mobile, which is a big advantage <clears throat> to keywords everywhere, which as far as I know is only available in, uh, on your desktop. So if you do keyword research while you're on your phone, Uber Suggest would be a great place to start. Or my other favorite is Keywords Everywhere. You go to keywordseverywhere.com. It used to be free, now it's $10. Don't panic, y'all. It's 100,000 credits for 10 bucks. When you install it onto your computer, it will show you how many credits you have. I bought this in October and I still have 35,000 credits left. So I'm using this all day. I'm using it when I critique my students' channels. I use it like you can turn it on and off. If you don't need to do keyword research, turn it off because otherwise it runs every single time you do a Google search. But if you don't need it, turn it off. For me, I'm using it all day long every day and I think it's gonna last me six months, easy, right? So 10 bucks for six months, small price to pay. So if you do go do keywords everywhere, you come here, you have to buy the plan that you want, they send you an API key in your email and then you have to follow the instructions and basically just hook it up to your channel. And then once it's on there, it works for Chrome and for Firefox. 
And once it's on there, it's a plugin for the, Chrome, the Google browser. So let's say that your niche was investors. You want to attract investors, people that are gonna pay cash, close quick, they're not gonna ask for a ton of repairs, they'll do multiple transactions, you wanna work with investors, right? That's your thing. So what sort of video ideas would you come up with that investors would want to know about? So let's see, what if I did um, how to buy a rental property in Google? Here, let's see, do I need to make my, tell me if I need to make my screen bigger. When I make it as big as it will go, I can't see the comments bar and stuff like that. So tell me if I need to make it any bigger, but hopefully, hopefully that'll do it. Um, except now my other little chat bots are covering everything up here. I'll move it to the other side and I'll hopefully remember where I put stuff. Okay, cool. Pardon me while I talk to myself. So this is what Keywords Everywhere does. It puts the search volume on a monthly basis right here. Cost per click we do not need to worry about unless you're planning to run ads. Make it bigger. Sarah, that's as big as it goes. <laughs> Hold on, maybe I can go like this. Um, okay, oh, look at that, we'll do that. Holy crap, I could see that from 10 feet away and I don't even have my glasses on. So it will look like this. It will say the volume means 490 people a month are searching this exact phrase. Cost per click is if you're running a Google ad and you could say you could expect to spend $3.10 per click if you ran an ad and just like this, this ad right here, I searched how to buy a rental property and these first three things that showed up are ads. If I clicked on that, it would cost them $3.10 per click. But since I'm not running any ads, mine is all organic. I only look at this number right here, which is competition, which is 0.34. So it goes from, go, go to the right like this, Terry, is that what you're saying? Move it to the right. Is that better? Um, on a scale of 0.01 to 0.99, you're welcome, Sarah, that it is a 0.34, which is pretty low. So. If we figure it's on a scale of one to 100, one to 33 is low, 33 to 66 is medium, 66 to 99 is, or to one, right, is high. We don't ever wanna use high, and I rarely even use medium. I still go after the low competition keywords now. Yes, better, thank you, Edna. So I want to be able to rank for it, because if I do a video called, mm, Let's see, how to buy, I'm looking for one that has high competition. This one right here, 84. The competition score is 0.84. If I made a video and I called it rental property investment strategy and I show up on page eight of the search results, do you think anyone is ever going to see it? No, because nobody is going to scroll to page eight to find your content. Okay, Jillian, this is a very good question. I don't know if I can drag comments onto the screen when I'm sharing my screen. I guess I cannot. So Jillian said, would that search need to include your niche, your area, your physical area? It can, but it does not have to, okay? So you could, per, you could make a video called how to buy a rental property. And because the algorithm in YouTube and Google for that matter is so smart, it knows where you are located based on your IP address. It knows the videos that you have watched before. It knows what you have searched for before. It knows what you have clicked on before. It knows your whole search history on YouTube. So it's gonna figure out like, oh, how to buy a rental property and somebody did a video in Savannah and you're in Savannah, so therefore I should show you this video. Like the algorithm is pretty smart. We don't need to put your area in there. However, you could, you could call your video how to buy a rental property in Savannah, which is exactly what I did. Let's see, when I went to, I don't know how I'm ranking, how to buy your first invest. 
Hopefully I'm not going to totally embarrass myself because I did not look this beforehand. So do I show up on page one? Okay, I'm I'm uh, competing against bigger pockets. Look at that, Malcolm Lawson. Malcolm is in our Facebook group. Yay, Malcolm. And what a great looking thumbnail. Dude, your thumbnails are so good. I love that you're always posting saying, which one do you like better? And you're getting feedback and then you're using the one that people are telling you they like the most. Very smart strategy. So his thumbnail looks good. It's very clickable, but he does not have his area in here, right? It is generic. It's totally fine. For me, okay, I can't find mine. Apparently I'm not ranking on page one, um, but I called mine how to buy your first investment property in Savannah. So it's not, I mean, the key word was how to buy your first investment property. I just tacked in Savannah onto the end so that people would know where I was located. And that way I would attract people that were specifically looking in my area. So the answer to your question is you can, but you don't have to. All right. Uh, Liza, so we are on keywords. We went to keywordseverywhere.com and we installed a plugin. It's $10 and it plugs right into Google. So anything that you now search in the Google search bar that you type in this Google search bar will show up here and it will give you an idea of how competitive it is. You are looking when you are a smaller channel and you have fewer than I'd say 500 subscribers. My rule of thumb is I'm looking for something, I want to get at least 100 searches a month because if it gets less than that, there's just not a lot of demand for that topic. However, if it was how to buy a million dollar property in Milwaukee and it got 70 searches, I might make a video called how to buy a million dollar property in Milwaukee anyway, even though 70 is not a lot because that's a really, really high intent search phrase and nobody is searching for that unless they're planning to buy a million dollar property. You know what I'm saying? So I like it to be a hundred and higher whenever possible. If it's a little bit, a little, a little bit below that, that's okay. Another good example is we don't have any Costco's in Savannah and on the news about a year ago, they said, we're going to get a Costco in Savannah. When I did my keyword research, it was only getting 20 searches a month. Well, I knew that once we started construction and the Costco was going up, that that was going to start getting a lot more searches. So at the time, let's see, Costco Pooler. I think that's our keyword is Costco Pooler, Georgia. And there we are. Boom. We were only getting 20 searches a month, but I knew that that would go up because as people started to find out about it and as it became more commonly known, now we're up to 590 searches a month and look at the competition. Zilch! So when you go on YouTube, this is, of course, Nicole is my buyer's agent and Nicole gets recognized out and about town all the time. She was with her mom a couple weeks ago. Her mom was visiting from Florida. They went to the store and somebody said, are you that real estate lady that did the video about Costco? And her mom was like, dang girl, you're killing it. And she felt so cool that she looked like a rock star in front of her mom. I was so proud. So you could do a smaller keyword research or keyword volume if you are pretty sure that it will become more searched later on. Otherwise, I try to go for nothing that's got less than 100 searches a month. Then I try to go no more than 1,000 searches a month. Because if your channel is very new and it's very small and you don't have a lot of videos and you don't have a lot of views and you don't have a lot of subscribers, you just don't have any authority in the eyes of YouTube and Google yet for them to really be promoting your content a lot, especially when you're competing against much, much bigger YouTubers. So go for the ones that have low competition. I would rather that you rank in the top five results for a bunch of very small keywords, and then you can go for the more competitive keywords later 
because now YouTube is like, okay, look at this. She's ranking for all of these different terms. People are liking the videos, they're watching, they're saving it to a playlist, they're leaving a comment, they're giving it a thumbs up. You're giving all these positive engagement signals to YouTube. So start with the ones that you know you can win. Like we want some easy wins right at the beginning. It makes it easier to go for the harder ones later down the road. Okay, does that make sense? Philip, you can't see my search bar? Hmm, okay, let's see. What if I make it like that? Eh. Hopefully I can do that. How do the credits get used up in keywords everywhere? Are you paying for them now? Yeah, I am because I have it turned on. Again, $10 for six to 12 months worth of using this program, I'm okay with it. But if you wanted to turn them on and off, assuming that you can actually see my search, my, um, my bar up here, I have to slide this to the side. This icon right here, can you guys see it? It's a black circle with a red K in it. You just go up there and you click on it and you can toggle it on and off. So if you're not doing keyword research, just turn it off. And if you are doing keyword research, then you turn it back on. Okay, groovy. So then let's say that you decided, what was it? It was how to buy a rental property. Was that what I was using for my example? So my 490 searches a month, 0.34. Then we go over to YouTube and we do how to buy a rental property to see who are we coming up against? Who are we competing against? And this very first one is an ad, so that doesn't count. Um, I honestly don't know who Graham Stephen is. I think he teaches people investing. He's got a million views. It's a year old, so if your video is good and people like it and they watch it, even though you're a much smaller channel, you could still overtake this and start ranking above this video but your, vid your video would have to be really, really good. I mean, this guy's got a million views. Um, the Dave Ramsey Show, okay? Like my little tiny channel cannot compete as far as size and view count from the Dave Ramsey Show. But you can go through, you can look at what other people are doing, you can watch their videos and go, oh, okay, you know what? This was a really good one, but he didn't talk about the cap rate. I should make a video and I'm gonna talk about cap rate. How do you figure out what it is? What does it mean? Is it important? Does it matter if the cap rate is 3% versus 7%? You can make a whole video and do kind of the same idea, but elaborate on it, go into things that they did not talk about or expand on what they talked about or just shoot it in a different way so that if this guy, like I haven't watched it, but what if he's one of those people, he's just standing in front of a whiteboard writing stuff down, maybe you shoot it and you make it a lot more interesting, right? Okay, let's see. Uh, Jonathan says, would you recommend doing multiple videos the same day and then scheduling them out weeks in advance? Totally, batch filming is the way to go. If you're gonna turn on the camera and record, I say record three or four videos at once and then drip them out over the next couple of weeks. That's so much easier, right Susan? Heck yeah, so much easier. Is the initial keyword research always in Google or do you do the search in Google? You can do it either one. So you'll notice I am in YouTube right now and when I type this into the search bar, the same thing is showing up here as it did over here in Google because who owns YouTube? Google. So this thing works in either one. I, I don't know why, but I often start my search in Google just because I also get an idea of are they showing up on the front page? And this was the million dollar one, and this was the Dave Ramsey one, and this was the third guy one. So you know, once you're ranking in the top three on YouTube, it would be very, very possible for your video to show up over here on the first page of Google as well. The other thing that I like about doing it on Google is that you get this bar on the side. You get this little thing that says related keywords and people also search for. So if you're, how to buy a rental property was a dud. Let's say that it had way too much competition or it did not fall between 100 and 1,000 searches a month. 
you can come over here and say, okay, well, what other things would be good? How about investing in rental properties for beginners? That is a perfect, it's a little bit high. I'd, I'd prefer it to be like 0.35 and less. But if your channel already has a lot of views and a lot of subscribers and you are building up some authority, this would be a great keyword to go after. It gets 880 searches a month. That's a great keyword, totally doable for you to rank for. Again, a little bit on the high side, but not much. It's not 0.84, for example, like this one. Rental property investment strategy. It gets 260 searches a month, which still is nothing to sneeze at, but the competition is way too high. You just won't be able to rank for that. And so you can go down here and get ideas for other things. Or you could go like how to buy a rental property in and see what Google is auto suggesting. If you live in Florida, if you live in Texas, if you live in Canada, if you live in Detroit, or how about uh, without 20% down, with an LLC, with no down payment, with little money down. You can get ideas for variations of that keyword if your first idea was not, not all that great, right? Stacy, thank you for bringing up TubeBuddy. I love TubeBuddy for many, many things, but I do not love it for keyword research. And I will show you why. Let's see. Um, I have to figure out where all my stuff is. I made my screen so wide and big that now I can't see my login information. All right, so if I go into YouTube Studio and I go over to the TubeBuddy plugin, um, is that it? This is kind of a neat idea. So let's say it was how to buy a rental property. So we know over there that it's a good keyword. It gets enough searches and it has a low enough competition. Let's see what TubeBuddy says. TubeBuddy is only giving it an SEO score of 62%, which in my book is not all that great. The reason why is because it only gets 490 searches a month. To them, that's not a lot. They're, they're thinking of YouTubers who wanna get millions and millions of views, right? And to them, something that only gets less than 500 searches a month is not all that great. You know, they're, they're trying to help people make giant YouTube channels, but for a small, hyper-local business, to them, it's just not really a great keyword. So I use TubeBuddy for the tags, you can use it for the thumbnail, you can use it to see how you're ranking, all of those things. I personally do not use it for keyword research and that's why. Um, moving to Savannah is my pillar piece of content. Between moving to Savannah and, whoops, did that not work? Oh yeah. TubeBuddy gives it a 26%. I have closed well, my team and I have closed well over $100,000 in GCI from moving to Savannah. They say that that's a crappy keyword. I respectfully disagree, TubeBuddy, because for me, a small hyper-local business, it's a freaking great keyword is what it is. <laughs> so, that's just my personal opinion. If you like using TubeBuddy, go for it. I'm not gonna tell you that you shouldn't. However, what TubeBuddy says is a good score and what Google or Keywords Everywhere says is a good score are two totally different things. If you decided you wanted to use Ubersuggest. Um, oh, so somebody said, why are they green? Okay, let me show you that. So if you go back into your Keywords Everywhere settings, you click on the little thingy up in your bar, you go to settings, these are your personal options, right? So I said, I want you to highlight the volume when it's more than 100, and I used to have less than 1,000, but now I'm doing like 10,000 because my channel has a lot of authority now, right? I've, I've got 6,500 subscribers, I'm getting 20,000 views a month. My channel has some authority, so I can go for the ones that get a lot more searches. And I've said highlighted in green. You can click on that and it shows you the color wheel and you can pick whatever color you want. I just figured green means go. Green's the color of money, honey. And that's my personal 
choice was just bright green. You pick whatever color you want. You can show the, the cost per click or you can turn it off. If you don't ever plan to run ads, you can turn the cost per click off, not a big deal. You can also say, what websites should we put this search on? So Google search, YouTube, Google search console, the keyword planner, DuckDuckGo, I don't even know what that is, Bing, I don't need it on Amazon. People are not searching on Amazon or eBay. Uh, it could do it on Answer the Public, Yahoo Search. I have no idea what Suvel is. I've never heard of that before. Or Etsy. People are not going to search for real estate for sale on Etsy. Moz is another keyword research tool. So um, you can choose whatever settings you would like to have. And that's how you do that. Okay, but if we go back to Uber Suggest. So I'm, okay, let's have a question. Um, somebody give me a topic idea and we will do some real keyword research. I'm just going to look at the comments and like the first one that I see will be the winner and I will send you my awesome little mug and a copy of my book. If you already have a copy of my book and you don't want it and you want to donate it to somebody else, let me know. But if you want it, I'll autograph it. I'll send it to you. That would be awesome. So I'm looking at the comments just to see what is an idea that you have for the video? And we'll do some real live keyword research together. So dog friendly neighborhood, Jillian Brown, ding, ding, ding. We are the winner. Okay, so dog friendly neighborhood. I'm gonna do singular, but we can also do plural and that will probably change the results that we get. I don't want to register right now. Close. Ooh, zero? Really? How about dog-friendly neighborhoods? Question. None. Okay, how about dog-friendly neighborhoods in San Antonio? Like, I maybe we just have to be more specific and put the town in there because otherwise nobody is just searching for that. Um, it says processing, processing... Huh, is that really that nothing is showing up? I'm gonna try it in keywords everywhere. Dog friendly neighborhoods in San Antonio. And it could be, it could be that there are zero searches a month or not necessarily zero, but they're just not enough for them to be gathering information on it. And this is actually a really good real life example because this happens to me all the time. And then people go, oh, I can't make a video about it. Well, sure you can. Let's see what other suggestions they would have. Dog-friendly hotels, dog-friendly stores in San Antonio. Okay, that would be good. It's, it's only 70, it's not 100, but if your niche is dog lovers and that's who you're trying to attract, that would actually be just fine in my book. It, and it's got no competition. That'd be amazing, right? What about... Dog-friendly restaurants in San Antonio. That would be awesome too. So you could do a video on dog-friendly restaurants. You could do a video on dog-friendly stores. And then you could do a video on dog-friendly neighborhoods. Or we could try dog-friendly subdivisions. Or we could try dog-friendly communities. Like we could just keep going until we find something. And it might take a while. Dog friendly, how about communities? All right, let's see. How about San Antonio pet friendly? What do we get if we do pet friendly instead of dog friendly? Man, Google, you're killing me today. Um, dog friendly places. So you could do dog friendly places slash San Antonio neighborhoods, right? So the keyword is dog friendly places, but then we're further refining it by telling people it's in San Antonio and we're gonna talk about neighborhoods. So you may have to tweak the keyword a little bit until you find something like you would not ever wanna do pet friendly restaurants if it gets 12,000 searches a month and you're a smaller channel, even though the competition is low, 
it's just going to be very hard for you to rank for something that gets this much search volume and you're a newer channel. But once your channel is starting to rank for lots of other things, then by all means, go for something that gets that much search volume. So Jillian, I'll just send you a message on Facebook and I'll get your mailing address and I'll send you off your swag, lady. Dog parks near me. Okay, so the near me thing... I have mixed thoughts about. So if we do dog parks near me, because Google knows where you are based on the algorithm and all the stuff that we already talked about, in theory, it should show you dog parks in your area. And it is. So I'm getting ones in Savannah and Rinkin, which is the town where I live, and it's showing on the map and da 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 But if people go search for that on YouTube, I don't think they're typing in dog parks near me on YouTube because I don't know that people I'm looking for oh that's his channel like if we typed in dog parks near me on YouTube what do we get we get just general dog park videos and, and videos from dog trainers, but not really showing you a list of the dog parks that are near you because they wouldn't do this on YouTube. They would do it on Google. So you can try it and see if it works, but I don't think you'll get a, a really good click through rate because I don't, I just don't think that people are using that phrase on YouTube. But it's worth a shot. It's worth trying just to see what happens. What's the worst that can happen is it doesn't get a lot of views. And now you know. Because honestly, with YouTube, everything is about testing. You never know if something's really going to work until you try it. And the only way you'll know is if you actually publish it and make it a public video so that people can tell you whether or not they were interested in it. Um, why? What should volume be or do we concentrate only on the competition? So the volume should be between 100 and 1,000 whenever possible until your channel gets much bigger. Then you can go for more than 1,000 searches a month, but I would say keep it below 1,000 searches and preferably more than 100. Okay, so we're looking at the search volume as well as the competition store score. Here is another example. So we're on YouTube. If I just type in Naperville... Illinois and let's say that you you serve Naperville in Illinois so this guy oh my gosh I I did the search earlier today as I was preparing for this broadcast and I was like this dude is killing it his name is Austin and I invited him to join the group today because I said you're doing an awesome job I love it and I'm totally showing your channel as an example of how well this can work so his this volume, Naperville, Illinois, gets 6,000 searches a month, but the competition is only 0.02. But you can see that he's been making videos for a while now, and he's using Naperville, Illinois. I'm sure he's using it in his tags and up? in his description. Let's go see. We can have the TubeBuddy thing, um, the TubeBuddy plugin installed, and then I can go show my search rankings. So he's got pros and cons of living in Naperville, living in Naperville, moving to Naperville, cost of living in Naperville. And when we were messaging back and forth on Facebook, he was like, yes, I totally ripped off your idea and deployed it. And I think that's awesome. You guys all have my permission to take what somebody else is doing if it's working in their area and try it for yourself. We don't compete against each other when we're all in different states, and even when you're in the same town, I still honestly feel like there's room enough for everybody, so go for it. Everybody has a different personality. Everybody shows up differently on camera. There's more than enough room for five different real estate agents in the same city if you're all on YouTube and you all have different personalities, so don't, don't worry about that kind of thing. But I just wanted to show you that these tags, he's using Naperville, Illinois, all over his content, on all of the videos and that's why he is just dominating the YouTube search cuz I've never I've never done a search for Naperville Illinois before this is truly an organic incognito search if you will because I've never looked for it before and when I saw him and I was like nah 
again, he's everywhere. And can I also point out the thumbnails? Can we take a minute to talk about thumbnails? We talked about channel art yesterday. Thumbnails are just as important. So for instance, this one right here, it's not very eye-catching to me. I can barely read the text. Uh, I would have to put my glasses on to read what that says. The text is teeny weeny and it's not very colorful. Whereas this and this, super easy to read, very colorful. They jump right off the page. This one's getting a little busy with the background, but you know what? If he is getting a good click-through rate, then that's all that matters. So you just have to go and look at your video, see what the click-through rate is. If the click-through rate is very low, I'd say if it's below 3%, change your thumbnail and see what happens. The worst that can happen is it doesn't make any change. It's probably not gonna get any worse if it was only two point something percent to begin with. But what if it went up to 5%? If it was 2.5 to begin with and it went up to five, you've now doubled the amount of views you're getting on your video just by changing the thumbnail. It's a very easy thing to do. Go get somebody on Fiverr to make you a thumbnail for five bucks or say, I'll give you $25 and you make me five different thumbnails, go pick your five most recent videos and have that person make you five new thumbnails. It doesn't have to be expensive. You don't have to go with, um, oh, what's that website? Design Pickle, it's like $300 a month and they'll do all of your graphic design. So it's probably a deal, but still 300 a month is a lot. So cool. All right. As I'm looking at our Austin, I'm glad that you jumped on. Yes. I was like, dude, I'm totally going to use you in my live today to show you people an example of what's working. And the reason I chose Naperville is my sister lives in Chicago. So I kind of know the area and it's a suburb way outside of the city. Technically, yes, it's in the greater Chicago area, but people are not it's showing up for the search Naperville. It's not showing up for Chicago. So I just wanted to show that you don't have to live in a giant city like San Antonio or Savannah's not giant, but it is a city name. They're not like Rankin, Rankin. I live in Rankin, Georgia. Let's see what Rankin gets. If I looked up Rankin, Georgia, really? It's still getting 6,600 searches a month. That's interesting. But if I did Rankin, Georgia dog parks, for example, zero, it's getting zero. So I just wanted to show you that you don't have to live in a very densely populated area in order for keyword research to still work. Okay. Then we also talked about, so I'm going to go back to this guy, the mortgage pug. When we were talking about your niche and how to specialize, it can also be, somebody said, um, my, whoops. All right. So one of the biggest questions, my kids are in all of my videos. That's going to be like my plan, I wanna have kids in my videos, but I don't know what my niche should be. And I said, well, I think that is your niche. If you're gonna have your kids in your videos, it maybe is not a niche per se, but that's kind of your shtick, that's your thing, that's your branding, that's what makes your channel yours. This guy is a mortgage officer, or mortgage loan officer. His name is Alex McFadden. Uh, he is in Canada, I believe. I met him at the Bomb Bomb Rehumanize Summit last year, and he's got pugs. And so his whole thing is called The Mortgage Pug. His Instagram channel is The Mortgage Pug. And all of his videos, he's got the pug in it. If we go to his videos and we look, his thumbnails actually are not showing the pug anymore. I wonder if that is he's not going to do it as much anymore. But when he spoke at Rehumanize, he was like, I'm usually holding my pug in the video. That's kind of my thing. So you can make your persona, your mm, demeanor on camera. Are you very serious? Are you wearing a suit? Are you wearing flip-flops and a, an Aloha shirt? Are you wearing workout clothes and you're running because you're a, a marathon runner? Like you can make that part of your appeal as well. Okay. So I want you to focus on the type of person that you're trying to attract with your content. Think about what they would be wanting to know if you decided that, you know, first time millennial home buyers was your niche. What would they be Googling? 
What would they come to Google or YouTube and start searching for, and then use one of these keyword research tools to help you come up with the ideal title that gets enough search volume that you know people are looking for it and has low enough competition that it would be relatively simple for you to rank for it. That is the whole goal. That is what has made my channel show up in the search results when people are looking for information about buying or selling a house in Savannah. Now, you can make videos about restaurants and interviewing local business owners and all that kind of stuff, but I wanted people to know that I am a real estate agent and that's what I'm here to do is help you buy or sell a house. So I decided that most of my content would be focused on real estate. You don't have to, if you wanna branch out into other things, just make sure that they know you're a real estate agent in these videos and that it has enough search volume and low enough competition that you're actually gonna get these videos seen. Cause there's nothing worse than spending all of this time to make a video and then nobody sees it, right? Like you go and you look at a channel and it's just, it's not getting enough views it's a bummer. We want people to be able to see the videos that you're making. So let's see, I did, um, I did one last week called, am I annoying my realtor? And people are like, what are people actually searching for that? Am I annoying my realtor? And of course my whole video is, no, this is why you've hired me. This is what we do for a living. Ask me your questions, I'm here to help you. And it's gotten 450 views in a week, which really surprised the heck out of me. Again, TubeBuddy says, that's not a good keyword. Well, I, I would disagree. When you're getting almost 500 views in the first week that your video is out, yeah, I would disagree. I would say that that's a pretty good keyword. All righty. So that was it for keyword research. Let me see what questions we have. Um, Diana, I'm not talking about like the ins and outs of thumbnails today. We just don't have enough time. We're already at 345. Um, but I have a bunch of videos on my channel, on my YouTube for Agents channel about how to outline your picture and thumbnails and stuff like that. If you wanna go watch those, more power to you. Just search my name on YouTube. I've got two channels. One is for consumers, one is for agents. Go to the one for agents and look for the one about thumbnails. So, cool. Um, how critical is the 30 to 1,000, well, 100 to 1,000, and 33 or less on a new channel? It's a very, very critical because your channel is so new, you don't have any authority yet. And it's like me saying, If I went to Google and I typed in Savannah, Georgia homes for sale, Zillow is going to show up at the top, right? They're not, not even with an ad. They're going to show up organically because Zillow as a website has a zillion times more authority than my little website does. If you're not going to show up at the top of the search results, there's no point in doing it, right? Because no one will ever see it. There is zero benefit to showing up on page 17 of the Google search results or the YouTube search results. If you're not ranking for it, don't even make the video. That's my opinion. If you're gonna make the video, the goal is for it to rank at the top. So it doesn't always have to be number one, but I want it to be on page one and preferably at the top. As many videos as possible. And you can search and see how they're doing. Um, your YouTube channel analytics is a gold mine of information. If you will just take the time to look at it, you'll see how many impressions did it get. When somebody searched for San Antonio dog parks, your video was displayed as an impression 700 times. How many times did people click on the video and then watch it? How much watch time did you get as a result? Do they stay all the way to the end? Do they leave after the first 20 seconds? Do they watch at least halfway? Like all of those things are great sources of information so that you will know what to make videos about and what people wanna see more of and how to make them more interesting like different camera angles. <laughs> uh, I gotta figure out how to get a better camera for my computer. I have like a 23 inch iMac. It's an awesome computer and it's only two years old, but 
the quality of the camera here versus here, yeah, it's not so great. Mm, oh well. R&D, rip off and duplicate, totally. Now I'm not saying plagiarize and I'm not saying completely steal someone else's idea and make it exactly the same. You gotta put your own spin on it. You gotta make it your own. But there is no problem in saying, wow, they did a video about moving to Savannah and it worked really, really well. What if I do it for moving to Toledo and you do it in your own style with your own branding and your own color scheme and you're obviously gonna talk about totally different things because it's a different city. I see no reason why we can't be inspired by each other, right? Like. What do they say? What's that saying? Uh, a rising tide lifts all the boats, right? Sunny, really? I had a thumbnail that was at 1.9 and it went to 7.3%. So think about that. If you were getting 50 views in a week on the video, she almost quadrupled her click-through rate, right? Actually, I think that is. That's quadrupled her click-through rate. So now that would bring you up to 200 views a week instead of 50 views a week. So your thumbnail, do not underestimate the importance of your thumbnail. It can really, really, really affect how well your video performs. Cool. Kimberly says, Austin, good job. Do you know each other? I'm, I'm guessing maybe you guys know each other. Cool. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. um, Sharon, I'm looking at your comment, but I'm trying to see exactly what it says. When you search for his channel, I'm assuming you were talking about Austin and his city in Illinois. Uh, it shows competition below the search bar to be able to see that you need to pay for that in TubeBuddy. Oh no, you don't. Uh, it's totally free. The TubeBuddy has many different, um, levels. One is free and then there's the pro and then there's the star and then there's the legend, but all of them show the search volume. So if it's not displaying, you may need to um, reload the API key or something like that. I would just go to their support menu and see, ask that question, see if you can find out what it is, but it's free. You don't have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. Dave Woodson, another bad word is meth. Yeah, I would not search for anything that has meth. I would not make a video that has meth in the title personally. <laughs> uh, too funny. Um, so I, I see questions about thumbnails. That's a whole different subject for a whole different day. Oh, uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Keith, what? Um, love the videos our channel is posting every Friday in Woodstock, my old office. Yes, I used to be in the Woodstock office in Georgia before I relocated to Savannah. I am very glad that you guys are posting every Friday. That's amazing. I was trying to meet up with you for dinner when we were at a family reunion last week, but we never made it happen. That was a bummer. Um, do you ever check your Facebook messenger messages? Just asking Keith. <laughs> Um, <laughs> really? Everybody wants to know about my background lights. Did I post the link? I don't think I posted the link. So I went to, I, I let's see. I'll share my screen one more time. I went to Amazon and I searched for, let's see, colored... LED studio lights, something like that. And I found, where are they? So this one is what I have behind the table. It's, it's a strip. It's like a big piece of double-sided tape with lights in it. And I stuck it to the back of that desk behind me. Behind the red chair, it it's kind of like this. This one has a mount where you're supposed to, whoops, put it, I don't know why my mouse does that. Um, where you're supposed to put it on a tripod. Mine just has a little thing where it sits on the floor and then it has all these different colors. So you can choose what color do you want the light to be. So it's not exactly that one, but it's very similar. And it was a set of two for 30 bucks. They were not very expensive at all. And they're fun. I just like that 
I have a hard time with the light in this room because I'm facing a window now, but if I have the curtains open, then I get all completely washed out. So I have the curtains closed, but then it gets really dark in here and still having an issue where like when I lean forward and stuff, you can see how the, the color changes. It goes from yellow to white and back again. It's, it's a pain. It's probably the webcam with this computer. So I'm gonna have to investigate better camera options just cause that drives me insane. But I like having the little lights back there. Like that light behind the table is the strip light. And then behind the red chair is the one on the floor. And it's fun. Uh, Lynette, is there an ideal length of video? Well, this is not a, a short answer. YouTube likes longer content. The longer you, if you bring somebody to the YouTube platform, the longer they stay on, the longer their session time is. So they came to YouTube, they watched your video, then they watched another one, then they watched another one. Doesn't even matter if they were all on your channel or not. That's called a session until they turn around and they leave and they go back to whatever they were doing before. The longer the session time, the more favorable that is in the eyes of YouTube. So if they determine that you bring people to the channel and they stay there for a long time, they are going to reward you by having your videos show up higher in the search results and they're gonna recommend your content more often. So having said all that, doing like two minute Tuesdays is not really super beneficial on YouTube because they want people to stay longer than two minutes. I find that most of my videos end up in the four to seven minute range. However, the very best video on my channel is 10 minutes long. The second best video is four minutes long. The third best video is like five and a half minutes long. So longer than three minutes does much better than anything else, but the 10 minute video is the best one. And if you can, you don't have to keep them watching all 10 minutes, but if they watch at least 50% of it, that really, really helps. So to wrap up, I would say, make it as long as it needs to be and no longer. Do not make it longer just for the sake of making it longer. Do not keep talking when you have nothing else to say, just because you're trying to make the video longer. If it's only gonna end up being six minutes long, so be it. We want it to be the best damn six minute long video that you could possibly make. But do not think that they need to be 90 second long videos because that's what everybody wants to do on the other social media platforms and that's not what works on YouTube. You'll find that the big, big, big YouTubers that do these live streams where they're on for an hour, just like this one, we've been on for 55 minutes, they do great on YouTube because people show up and they stay for a long time. So in general, longer is better, but if you're doing a video about the best dog parks, how long can you possibly talk? You don't, you're not gonna do a 45 minute video on dog parks, right? So I would say somewhere in the five to 10 minute range is probably ideal for the length of attention span that the typical viewer would have in, in a real estate context. Um, do you also put your videos on your website? I surely do. You, uh, TubeBuddy has this awesome section called promo materials when you log in and I'm not sure if it's available in all of the plans. So those of you that have the free plan, go log in, go to tubebuddy.com, log in with your information, go to your dashboard there. There is a section called promo materials. I'm fairly certain it's available with the free version, but I just don't remember. In there, there is a link. It's kind of like a bit.ly link to take your most recent upload and embed it somewhere. So you take that little snippet of code, you embed it on your website, mine's right on my homepage. That way, every time I upload a new video to YouTube, it gets automatically updated on the front page of my website. It's awesome. And I only had to do that one time and I never have to do it again. It happens automatically. It took me 10 minutes, like literally two minutes to copy the link and then a few minutes to go to my website, log in, decide where I wanted it to be and paste it. And then you're done, cool. Can, I love this question, Manuel, can we change our description and tag if we're not ranking? Yes! Just in case you didn't get that. Yes! <laughs> you absolutely can. You can change every single thing about your video except the file that you uploaded that's the actual video file. You can change the name, 
the description, the tags, the thumbnail, the cards, the end screen, you can change everything except the actual video upload file anytime you want to. Now, having said that, I would say don't make all of the changes at the same time because then you don't know which thing caused the video to improve. So just change the thumbnail and then monitor it for a couple of weeks. If it's not making a big difference, then change the title as well. But if you change the title and the description and the thumbnail, and then suddenly your video is performing like gangbusters, you're not gonna know which thing was the one that moved the needle. So do one thing at a time. And then I also like to write down in my notes app, what did I do in the day that I did it? So that when I go back and I review later, I, I know exactly what I did. Oh yeah, on February 10th, I uploaded the new thumbnail and then suddenly the click-through rate went from 1.9% to 7 point something percent. Okay, I hope that answers that question. Let's see. I make my videos about my city, but I'm not getting many views. I use the city name in most of the videos and the tags, but it doesn't seem to do any good. Well, I would have to go and look at your channel and see what all these videos are, but what are the videos like? Do you do any editing? Is it one take where you're just looking at the camera talking, but there's no editing? Is there B-roll? Is there graphic? Um, or is there text popping up on the screen? You have to make it interesting for the viewer. Unfortunately, today's generation has zero attention span and we have to do whatever we can to keep their attention. And that means making it visually interesting as well. So I would go review your analytics. If you are showing up in the search results, but you're not getting clicks, like your click-through rate is less than 3%, that tells me it's the thumbnail. Nobody's clicking on the thumbnail. Either the title was not enticing enough or the thumbnail was not enticing enough. So they're not even clicking. If they are starting to watch the video, but they leave very early on, so they only stay for say 30 seconds, then it's the content. The content is not engaging enough. It's not holding their attention. If you're just not even showing up in the search results at all, then it's, like we got it, there's a strategy behind it. And it's a lot more than what I can discuss on this, this call, but it's, it's everything together. We've got to make it interesting. We've got to have good thumbnails. We have to have good channel art. We have to do good, good keyword research. We have to do all of the things. So, and then we have to just be interesting on camera ourselves too. Like if you sit there and you say, hello, I'm John. Today I'm going to give you a market update and I'm going to show you my whiteboard and I'm going to draw graphs and statistics with my big fat green marker for the next 45 minutes. And I'm going to speak in a very soothing voice so that you fall asleep. That's not going to be really interesting to people. So again, I haven't watched your videos, so I don't know what they're like, but we've just got to be really animated and engaging on camera to try to keep people's attention for the most time, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Susan, le okay, let's talk about the sub for sub thing. So when I first created this group, my idea was, hey, let's support each other. Let's help everybody get to 100 subscribers. Once you get to 100 subscribers, you get a custom URL. So it'll be youtube.com forward slash Susan Hodgkins instead of youtube.com forward slash blah, 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 bunch of gobbledygook, right? But I meant for it to help you get your channel started, not for it to be a crutch. And it has absolutely turned into a crutch for many, many, many people. They share every video they ever make in this group and lots of other real estate groups asking for people to watch and try to get as much watch time as they can from other real estate agents. But you're really not helping your content show up in front of your desired audience because the algorithm says, oh, 90% of the people that watch this videos are real estate agents. Therefore, I should show it to more real estate agents. No, I want you to show it to people that want to buy or sell a house in my market. We're trying to attract our ideal customer avatar, not other real estate agents. So I've known for a long time that this was not a good idea. And I've been saying in the group, I really don't think this is a good idea. I think that you guys need to stop sharing all of your videos and start sharing them in local Facebook groups, like mom groups and um, the buy, sell, trade groups, 
Whenever somebody says, hey, we're thinking about moving to the area, does anybody know a good realtor? Share your video that talks about relocating to the area. Instead of saying, oh, I have a great realtor, call Karen, here's her phone number. You could say, I made this video all about the area. Maybe this would help. You're being very helpful, not spammy at all. And that usually is much more well received than like, here's my open house, come to my open house. You know what I mean? Um, then I found out that it's actually against the YouTube terms of service to ask for subscribers in exchange for subscribing to someone else's channel. So if you want to share your videos in this group, that is your decision. If your channel is brand new, you're just trying to get as many eyes on your videos as possible, go for it. I'm not going to tell you that you can't. What I am going to say is that stop doing that as soon as you possibly can because we want to train the algorithm who your ideal viewer is. And if all of your viewers are other real estate agents, you're training the algorithm to show it to real estate agents. And you're also not, you're never going to be able to look at your analytics and get real results. Um, why was my watch time only 30%? Well, everybody watching your video was a real estate agent. They started to watch it on their phone. Then their phone rang, they answered it. They forgot to come back to the video. It's not that they didn't like the content and they left after 30 seconds. It's that we are busy real estate agents. Those analytics will not mean anything if we are skewing the data. So that's my opinion. Take it with a grain of salt. But um, I am discontinuing the subscribe threads Saturday, Saturday, which was like, hey, here's my channel. If you want to subscribe to it, go for it. It's not specifically saying sub for sub, but I don't want anybody to get in trouble um, and have YouTube shut down your account because in their terms of service, it says we can absolutely shut down your account if we feel that you're doing sub for sub and it's not worth it. It's absolutely not worth it. So we're just not going to do it anymore. And now I will get down from my soapbox. <laughs> um, Okay, well, we're at an hour, so I'm going to let you guys go and I will go in and answer more questions um, over the course of the evening and tomorrow morning, if I can, I've got a closing tomorrow, so I'll try to do my best, but, um, hi Jordan. I met Jordan Shalacy in person last spring. You're a doll. I just love you to pieces. Um, and I'm so excited for all of your success too. Jordan is killing it. Jordan is like freaking dominating Google in her market. You do a Google search and her crap shows up all over page one of Google. So that's what we want to have happen. And that's not going to happen if you only have other real estate agents following you. We need to have actual people following you, right? Okay, so tomorrow, on day four, I have historically been doing um, how to get over your fear of being on camera. Because I know that's a real thing. People are afraid to get on camera. They think that they're going to be judged. However, as I looked at my analytics, that was always the video that got the fewest amount of views. So I have decided to change it up. And instead, we are going to talk about consistency. I get asked this question all the time. How often should I post? Is it really that important to be consistent? Uh, you know, I'm going on vacation. I'm going to be gone for 10 days. My kids were sick. I took time off over Christmas and I missed a couple of weeks. Is it going to affect me? So we're going to talk about consistency tomorrow. What I think um, data that I can back up from YouTube and Google as far as what the algorithm says and the Google brain and all that good kind of stuff. That's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. So your homework for tonight is to do some keyword research. I want you to think of two or three video topic ideas and then do the keyword research and figure out exactly what the keyword for those videos would be. If you do two, three, four video topic ideas, and you come up with a keyword for each one, congratulations. You now know what the next two, three, four videos are that you're going to record. And you can record them all on the same day. You don't have to change your shirt in between. You could knock them all out in an hour and a half, two hours, and you would be done for an entire month. So that is the goal, right? So in the homework post for tonight, just go in and say what your ideas were for the video topics and some keywords. If you're having a hard time, you're not able to come up with a good solid keyword for that video topic, say what it is. Maybe other people can chime in. We'll try to brainstorm together and see if we can come up with a good keyword for you. And then tomorrow we will be talking all about consistency. 
So Jillian, hit me up in the message, in the Facebook message, so and give me your mailing address so that I can send you your swag, baby. So you can get this lovely thermal, non-dishwasher safe mug. Why? Can't like seriously, people, can we not make stuff that come that will go in the dishwasher these days? I know it can't go in the microwave because it's metal, but at least make it dishwasher safe because washing by hand sucks. If you put it in the dishwasher, all of the navy blue is going to come off and then you'll just be left with a stainless steel mug, which is okay too. All right. Thank you everybody for joining me and I will see you guys tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern. Bye.